They are imported. If I tell you I want to buy a shoe in a bar, the first thing you say is blessing. Now, what shoe you want to buy? Why you not buy what? Foreign made. So everybody want to get foreign because we do not believe in what? In ourselves. But I believe by the end of today, we know that we have potentials in us. We have potentials in us. So we want to welcome you once more, those that are intending to be fish farmers. Let us clap for them once more. Great farmers, this is a farmer's seminar. So when I say great farmer, I say great nation. No farmers, no nation. Great farmers, no farmers. Some of my life used to say no farmers, no food. It's also correct. <laughs> uh, my name is Idris Ahmed, uh, the CEO of Agropet Foods and Potential, and uh, the sole sponsor of this event. <laughs> that do we have enough fish farmers in Sabele? The answer is no. There is a difference between being in fish farming for business and training your fishes as pets. Because that is what most people do. They are not in business. They are just raising fish because they just like to see fishes grow. Actually, my name is Ulugo Blessing. Like I said, I'm a fish farmer like you. Not a farmer because I think the coordinator was saying that fish farmers, not farmers, oh, because we have so many farmers. Those are into what? Into what? We are into so many farms now. We have so many farms. This is fish farming. The fish master, Larry Obushina. Let us clap for him. First and foremost, let me say I'm so delighted to be here. I came all the way from Ibadan yesterday. All the way. And the simple fact is, I love farmers. And I'm also a farmer. And the best thing you can do is to say what you really, really practice. I'm a practicing fish farmer. And I've come to share part of my experiences with us today. Fish farming is dynamic. It is dynamic and nobody has all the knowledge. I'll be talking for just 30 minutes, but let us make this discussion to continue. Now, when the NEC started, he said so, he asked us a question, how many of us are about to start? Some of us raised up our hands. And he also asked the second question, how many of us are farmers already? I want to believe none of us has arrived. We have all not arrived. So we are all still into it. But the beauty of the business is, we might have been doing it, but there's always a newer way. There's a newer way. And there's some information you know that the person next to you does not know. There's some information you don't know because of time, because of experience. Let me quickly share something with us. Two years ago, I was on a plane and I needed to go from point A to point B. Now, there was a woman seated behind me and she had a small child, maybe like about three years. Immediately the plane took off. The young lady, the young girl started crying. And it was becoming embarrassing for those of us inside the cabin. But there was a man right from before we took off. He just slept off. I believe the man was still so tired. And as the plane kept on going, you know, in, in altitude, the young girl continued crying. And the mother was really, really so disturbed. What could be happening? I was also disturbed and I had to look back, but there was nothing I could do. I couldn't help the young girl, the mother couldn't help the young girl. It was the noise of the young girl that woke the man in front of me. And the man woke up, he looked at the back, and he said, Madam, it is her hairs, it is her hairs, give her water. Now you notice that if you have ever been in the plane before, the moment you start climbing, there will be a reaction in your ears from the eardrum, it's the auto lit. And if you are not really so, so, so conversant or so used to it, it is so discomforting. For the young girl, she couldn't take it. And she started crying. 
But the man said, give her water. And the mother gave the young girl water. And less than five minutes later, the young girl slept off. What happened? Experience. Experience. If you have never experienced it, you can never know it. While I was growing up, one of the things somebody told me was, if something happened to you and you used it as part of your experience, you are not wise enough. But if something happened to somebody else and you learn from it, you are wise. Today I've come to share my good and my bad experiences as a farmer. And I will start. Today we have always known that you can actually raise catfish and other forms of fishes inside artificial enclosures. By artificial enclosures, we mean dugout ponds, we mean concrete tanks, we mean polythene tanks, we mean plastic tanks. Now, people have said often that not most of the time that you cannot actually raise fishes in artificial enclosure. But well, please let's think about it. We are a country with very close to 200 million people. Can we actually make our people to feed on the fishes in the rivers? In 1997, I was opportune to, 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 to fish in the Atlantic Ocean. I was on the Atlantic Ocean for five days and four nights. And immediately, we got to the high sea. You know, there is, this, there is the sea and there is the high sea. On the high sea, you actually see the sun rising and the sun setting. No boundary, no neighbor, nothing. You are just right there. And one of the things that came to my mind was, you see, in school we were taught something called MSY. MSY is the maximum sustainable yield. And the basic thing that one is actually telling us is, if you have a water body, if you have a mother and a father, over time the father and the mother will keep on giving birth to, to babies. And the babies will grow, give birth, and it will continue like that. It's a cycle. But you see, the way we were catching the fish, I just knew in my mind, it's a matter of time. There will be nothing in the seas for us anymore. And it is the same thing that is happening to our rivers. Because right now, it is, it, is, it is believed that by the year 2030, Nigeria will be very, very close to 300 million. By year 2030. Now look at the way we are expanding. There's nothing bad about that. Because indeed, we actually have to expand. But if we expand and there is no food, then there is a problem. So the first thing is this. People have actually believed that it might not be easy for us to depend on fishes in the seas in the rivers and in the other waters. So what option do we have? Artificial farming, like we are doing. And one critical thing we need to consider about that is the comfort. When the MC came on board, he said something about, in my house, my pond. The beauty of that is that means we have your farming close to the market. For that one also, I will also be talking about the best practices towards making profit and also the strategic management. I will compress everything just within 30 minutes. Now, introduction to catfish farming. The African catfish is best known as catfish, mudfish. Now, it is slimy. On the top, it is dark. At the belly, it is white. Now, is that the only fish we can farm? I want to believe people from Top Feed and Grand Cereals and people like that, the, the, the answer to that should be no. Now, in other places in West Africa, in Ghana to be precise, Ghanaians prefer tilapia. Nigeria also we eat tilapia. But there's one critical thing, I will narrow this lecture down to African catfish. And there's a reason for that. Now, the fish is very sweet. It is very, very sweet. Extremely sweet. Why catfish farming? It is sweet. It is sweet. Now we have a population that can consume it. I came into Sapele at night yesterday because there was a delay. The plane was actually supposed to take off by two. We ended up taking off maybe some minutes to six. So before I got here, it was late. But I still saw the beauty of this place. This is the one that the maximum sunlight they have right now. It's maybe three hours a day. Norway, Iceland, some areas of Russia, Three hours, four hours maximum. But in Nigeria, we have weather. Like I always say, our weather can support it. Our land can support it. And interestingly, we have the three main water bodies in the world. We have water from the sea. We are, we are, you know, we are, we are, we, we, we are bothered by the Atlantic Ocean. We also have inland waters. We have the rivers. We have the lakes. And at the same time, we can actually dig bubble. Yes. I asked Mr. 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 Agome yesterday. I said, do we have water here in Sapele? He said, yes. In some places, if you dig bowl, you won't get water. 
where I come from, you wouldn't get water in some places. So that means we have water. Our weather can support it, and we have the water. And we have the local weather that can be used as feed. For the people in the feed manufacturing company, what it takes. Once we have what it takes, why shouldn't we do it? Now the borders are being closed. Our borders are being closed. Some of us are happy, some of us are not happy. But just like I said, let us look about the, let, let us look at the good side of everything. So that means if the borders are closed, that means we have no option but to eat our fish. So before you are producing, people that will eat the fish, they are ready. Some couple of weeks ago, where I'm from, I just started getting calls from people that have been, in quote, rejecting me. And they started giving me prizes that are actually good. And I was wondering, how come? But you are the same people that were saying that, you know, now the consumption is getting higher. Concerning the rice, there's something I have been telling our people. Immediately we cross this Christmas into New Year and we eat the, lo the local rice. Sincerely, that, in that industry will just... The rice is broken. The rice is as stone. Immediately, we in my house, I do the cooking. Not because I don't have a wife, but because I enjoy cooking. The first time I had to cook the rice, ah, so much stone. So I had to sit down and, we, and I started discussing with my wife, what do we do? So I devised the way of parboiling and sieving. Once I parboil and I put it inside a sieve, a lot of the stone will go. I have now devised the way to sieve further. Nigerians, we are so blessed because we know how to think. So sincerely, we also have the skilled knowledge to farm it. We are here today not because we don't have what to do, but because we are here to rub minds together. You will ask me a question, I will ask you a question. It's now a function of what I want to release to you and what I want to take from you. If you want to open up to each other, you will see that we have the skilled knowledge. Nigerians are versatile, Nigerians are good. So we have the skilled knowledge and at the same time it is generally acceptable. Some fishes are not acceptable. When I was on the sea, there was a particular time the, the, the sailors that went together, they caught some fishes. And immediately the fish, you know, the fishes were landed. The captain said, please, don't touch it. Because if we touch it, as, as from that moment, we, are, we have to turn the vessel and we go back to land. And we have already journeyed into the sea at least for like about three days. And I had to ask him, why? And he said, the fish is not only poisonous, you cannot eat it. So the African catfish is acceptable. In fresh form, we eat it. In frozen, we eat it. Smoked, we eat it. If you fry it, we'll eat it. It is sweet and it's acceptable. Either as fresh or as processed. And it can be raised in artificial ponds. At this time, there was a particular thing that, you know, Mr. Agrumet said. He said, is this seminar about wasting money? No. It's about sharing information. And when we share information, I believe the best thing we can give to ourselves is the information. Once you have the information, you will not lose money. When you don't lose money, that means you make more profit. And there's nobody that doesn't want to make more profit. You make more money, I make more money. There is no money that I will make that can block your own way of making your money. No. Where I come from, people used to say that I will block your way. It's a function of how wide my hands are. I try to block you and I stretch my hand. You can always go behind me. That's it. You know? So we are here actually to share information about what we what we are to do. Best practices. Best practices. Like I said, I'm compressing everything I need to say, and I'm just sharing from my own ideas and experiences. Now, there was a time a man consulted an older colleague, and the man wanted to make points. And after some weeks, he felt he has been able to tap into the most of the knowledge you could get from him. So after some time, he suddenly realized that the man wasn't calling him, he wasn't calling me. Because you know, he has made his point. I laughed. And by the time, and he put fishes. He put water, I put fishes. By the time the fishes were four months, he was very happy and he started thinking of how he was going to sell. Now he made the ponds in such a way that the ponds were close to the fence of another man. And the way he made the pond was a little in each of the ponds. Six ponds in a row. Just 
after each other. The one in the middle gave way. When it gave way, it broke into the next one because of the volume and the pressure. The next one gave way. The one after it gave way. The one after gave way. The fence of his house broke and all the fishes went to visit the neighbor. In the middle of the night, and they went into the gutter. When the man got there, you know there's some things that will happen to an elderly person. He will be crying, he will be smiling at the same time. When you try to console him, he will look at you and he will want to give you a dirty slap. As of that time, the best people I saw one when the ponds were being constructed. No reinforcement, nothing. What do you mean to that? Best practices. There are some things you need to know how to do. If you don't know how to do them, sincerely you are your own. A pond, construction of a pond is not as you construct a house. So when we talk about best practices, there are some things you need to know. Best practices in agriculture. People have said over and over again that nothing is new under the sun. Fine. But there are some things that will be new to you. They have never experienced them before. So with best practices, I would say that let us be genuinely humble to ask questions from people that have had problems, from people that have made mistakes. It is important. Now, going beyond best practices, we have ponds outside. People never knew such could work. People never could believe that you can put pond fishes inside the 1,000 liter tank and grow them to maturity. Just like way back in the past, people never knew that man can one day go up into the sky and fly. It's happening now in water. Now let us see what will happen in the next 30 years. Best practices. So please, I want us to be so, to release our mind and see. Thank God for what Hagrumet is doing. Now, by the time you see the ponds, by the time you calculate the dimension, if it is 2 meter by 3 meter, that is 6 meter. We believe the height is 1 meter. That is the normal. So 2 times 3 times 1, that is 6. The amount of, the volume of water inside that tank will be 6,000 liters. Over time, there have been research, researches to tell us the quantity of fish that can be inside those ponds. Before we leave here today, I will encourage us to try and see those tanks. We are talking about best practices. Let us see those tanks and let us try and see. For a lot of us that we don't have accommodations of our own, we are living in rented apartments. There's absolutely nothing wrong from us to do, you know, to, to wait step for that and try and have such tanks. The reason for that is this. We need to see how to make more money. There's no way you can be working for the government, working for somebody that your salary can be enough. I don't believe it. Even as a business owner, you to get to a particular stage of your business where you need to expand and diversify. Why? Why? The only reason for that is because we want to make more money. So if you have a 9 to 5 job or 8 to 5, you go out in the morning, you come back by evening. Is there anything wrong with you putting a pond at your back, at the back of your house, putting water in it and putting fish? When you wake up early in the morning, you give them food. Now, you see, there's a way you can feed catfishes three times a day, two times a day, or just once. Check your movement. If you are not always around in the afternoon and you get home a little late in the evening, compress the feeding and feed them once. For as long as you have water, there's some things you can do, your fishes will grow. Fishes are not like, they are not like birds in poultry, where you need somebody to monitor. You can actually produce those ponds in such a way that water will be coming in, water will be going out continuously, you know, and the fishes will eat, they will grow. The bottom line is we want to make more money. There was a woman that advised, the woman works in a broadcasting company, the husband used to work with MTN. And when their children started getting into university, there was nothing that they could do but to look for other ways. And I advised them, you have your own house, you have a well, why don't you put these 1,000 liter tanks at the back of your house? Initially, the, the husband was a little skeptical, but the wife embraced it. And the wife said, how can we do it? I said, number one, buy the tanks. Number two, do the plumbing. Number three, look for a way whereby the water will go out. Then, I'll take it off from there. They did this, and sincerely, two years later, the woman said, it is as if I am doing a job. What is a job in Delta? What is a job in Sabalim? 
thank you. Because by the time they sell, the woman will just collect all the money. And they will, because if you don't do it, you will still spend the money. You will still spend the money. So why don't you do something with the little funds and just you know deprive yourselves of some things? Best practices. Some people have done it. Some people are going to do it. Some people are doing it. We are rubbing minds. We are, nobody is there yet. As we are rubbing minds, we should try as much as possible to see how we can do it. The, ma the major key components in fish farming are water, feed, and fish. Somebody used to say, no fish wants to die. Like we always say, everybody wants to go to heaven. Nobody wants to die. If death were to come in now, through the back, you will see that we all run out. It was just the way the fan came down. If you notice that everybody started running. We all want to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. <laughs> That's the way it is. So for catfish farming, it is water, the feed, and the fish. If you get it right on the three, on those three, with those three components, sincerely you don't have any problem. The first thing with the water, check your water. Check the capacity, check the volume, check the content of the water. Check your pH, check your dissolved oxygen, check comp critical components of the water. I believe there are places where those things can be done here. If, if as many of us that we, we are not sure, I would like us to, at least after the program, get across to Mr. Mr. Idris. He will definitely, you know, give us where we can do that, or tell us where we can do that. Now the feed. This is a blessed place. Once I got here and I saw there are several feed companies. Most of those companies, their factories are actually, you know, where I come from. But they have made the feed available here in Sapele. I believe they have tried. Please, a round of applause for them, please. So the feed, the feeds are really here. And the fishes. The fishes are available. I noticed that there are some good breeders amongst us. If you have to fish, fish breeder, please, can you raise up your hand? What do you do then? Make friends with them. The reason for that is this. When you raise fishes, there are some that don't grow the way they should grow. It is a mother, it's like a mother that has two or three children. That mother, even if they are twins, that mother will tell you that this one is a little different. Because if I put a bowl of ever or apple, I know this one will always finish before this one. If you ask the mother, I don't know. Me too. I don't know. There are some children if you put them, if you if you if, if you twins, if you give back to them in Sapele, and if you take one to America, you leave the other one here. You will notice they, they, they won't grow the same way. Now if you change them again, one will always go. I don't know. So some fishes will grow, some will not grow. So you need to get so familiar with the breeder so that they can give you fishes that will grow. So from those critical components that we have just talked about, water. You see from the first picture, that is more or less like an earthen pond. The second one, there are cages inside water. We have tarpaulin ponds outside. We are talking about where we can put the water and the water that we can use to raise the fish. Once we have those components, then we can just move to the next one, which is the feed. Which is the feed. If your feed is good, your fishes will grow. Your fishes will grow. There's no two way about it. There's something I used to say and I used to tell people. The same fishes that you raise are the same fishes I raise. If your fishes are not growing, then something is wrong. Check the components very well. If I'm using the same feed and you're using the same feed, then your fishes will grow. You know? On the left we have pelleted feed. On the right we have extruded feed. The major components in the manufacturing of those feeds, most of them are actually in Nigeria. So sincerely, we have checked, we have seen the water, we have seen the feed. The next one is the fish itself. The fish. I believe you all know the fish. And just like I said, all we need to do is just familiarize ourselves with those people that are actually into breeding. From the three key components, we can further identify food stock management and, pro and procurement, breeding of the fish, table fish culturing, value addition to fish, and marketing. On the third and on the fourth, I'll spend some time. And that is the table field fish culturing. Since I said that we should raise up our hand and so not too many people actually into breeding, let me talk about culturing of the fish. We culture the fish mainly because we want to make 
money. Some of us are doing the business and we are not making money. Why? Let me quickly say this. By the time you have fishes in your pond, by the time your fishes get to four months, please listen carefully. Divide yourselves into four. This is why people don't make money. Divide yourselves into four. The one you sell for the first week, use it to pay yourself. So many of us, we are not paying ourselves. Pay yourself and forget about every other, every, every, everybody and every other thing. The following week, the one you sell, the one you sell, this is what you are going to do with it. Immediately you sell that one. Consider your staff. Use it to pay your staff. Use it to pay your staff. For the third week, whatever you sell, use it to maintain structures. Structures. Because there's nothing you can do. As beautiful as this building is, immediately this building is not inhabited for two years. By the third year, it will start giving signs that it's going to collapse. That's the way it is. Whatever the structure it is, and you don't maintain it, it will continue to depreciate. You need to, you, to dig your pond again. You need to do a lot of things. For the fourth week, the one you sell, whatever money you make from it, use it for consumables. That is what I do, and I've come to pass it across to you. Consumables like diesel, overprint, feed, things like that. Structure your business in that category. Over the years, you can now expand. It is because we have not been paying ourselves, we have not been managing the structures, we have not been paying our staff, and we have not been putting enough attention on the consumables. That's why a lot of us are not making profit. If you do it well, sincerely, and at the same time, if you had value, if you had value. Yesterday when I got here, we needed to visit one of Mr. Agrobet's person. You know, one of his people is one a, a particular person, and that and that and that and that guy operates a, a, a barbecue joint. Is he here? He's outside. That guy is adding a lot of is is, is adding a lot of value. Once you had value, that's what you make. So once you had value and you structure your business in such a way that you know how to market it. A lot of us we are not marketing our products very well. I produce and I market. And how do I do that? I synergize with people. Concerning my business, I don't do big man. I don't do big man with my business. When it's time for me to sell, I enter the pond, I bring it out together. If I shake your hand, if you don't want to shake me, no problem. If you say my hand is dirty, if you say my clothes is dirty, well, shit money no smell. Have you? So I strongly believe that we should try as much as possible to look into ways where we can market our products. Once we know how to market our products, then we can, you know, make more profit. Now, that one has to do with the blue stock management and the procurement. When we are, we as fish farmers, for those of us that don't understand breeding, if you want to go into it, consult. If you don't want to go into it, make sure you get the right species that you should raise. Now I'm trying as much as possible to run because of the time. I said something about marketing the other time. That is marketing. Look into ways whereby you can market your fish. I think there are ways to go around that. Let people know. Just do it with wisdom. Because if people don't know, how do you sell at a premium? It's important. This is the cadre whereby we want to link ourselves together and want to make more money. So part of how to do that is to be able to do the marketing ourselves. Now, I'm talk, I'm, I'll quickly talk about the strategic management techniques. What is strategy? Strategy. When somebody says that I have a strategy, that means I have a plan. Now, I can share my plan with you and I might not share my plan with you. My plan is my strategy. My strategy is my plan. What we are doing today is a strategy. And the strategy is for a lot of us to put more money in our pockets. It is important. I believe when the old amongst us die here, we bury them. And we bury them the right way, we bury them well. When my grandmother died, and we wanted to put a cloth on her, on her dead body, my mother said, and I felt the cloth was just too big, it was just too much. And I told the tailor to remove part of it. My mother said, no, 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 no. 
wrap everything around her. Let her go in glory. I believe the best way to die is when you close your eyes to have money in your pocket. That's the best way to die. That is a strategy. If you do this business and by the time you are moving on, you don't have money, then it's not a good strategy. Anytime you need to selfish and you are always easy, you are always frowning, that means you are not doing it right. Then you need to change your strategy. And part of that, the part, part of how, how we can do that is, at the end of this, please feel free to, sh to share your challenges with me. You can send them to me, you can send them to your government. We will continue the discussion. Because there are some things you are doing right, there are some things you are not doing right. I said something about const construction and location. Why do you have to put your pond so far from the market? If you need to pay a little more to get a pond, to get a place in town, it's better. Because your market, people who want to buy can even come on a Sunday to buy because it is close. It's a strategy. Then the management of your pond, there's a way you do it such that the management must be strategic. If it is not strategic, already you're having a problem. Why should you put your, your, your farm in a place where there is no water? Why? Where there is no security? That strategy is not good enough. Of course, the sales of your fish. I said something about sales the other time. You have to be strategic about it. And of course, the farm operations and stocking and restocking. So many of us now, where I come from, they are, they're finding it difficult to stock now because of the dry season. When the seasons are changing, there's sometimes you can stock, there's sometimes you cannot stock. With those kind of tanks outside, you can stock in January, February, March, April, May, all through to December. Because you are not depending on the elements of weather. So it's a strategy. A strategy. So your, the strategy you adopt is very, very important and it is very, very critical. In conclusion, I believe I've spent more than my time. But please, at this time, if you have questions, I will encourage you to write them down. Write them down, put your number, put your name. You can give them to Mr. Agromed or you can pass them across to me. And the, con and the discussion will continue. In conclusion, please, we have to become much more competitive. If you are not competitive in this business, it's a matter of time. You'll be out of the business. Because life is all about competition. Business is about competition. And it is the strategy that will make you to be competitive. The, the, the strategies you adopt will make you to be competitive. Some people are not doing the business the right way because they are not competitive enough. Yes, and I'm producing double of what you are producing and I'm, 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 I'm ready to sell for 800 or sorry for 600 or 650. That means I've lowered my price and I'm doubling what you are producing. People will come to me. It's a strategy. During the days of MKU Abiola, one of the things he did then was people that came into manufacturing of bread. Abiola reduced the price, he improved the quantity, he improved the quality, and he lowered the price. He put Coca Cola does it too. They all do it. They, our feed company, they all do it. If somebody were to come into the business right now and he's selling maybe like about maybe 300 naira per kilo. If they want to push him out, what will they do? They will just reduce their price for some few weeks. And farmers will rush there. Once the farmers rush there, that person will find it difficult to sustain because of overhead. They will move out and they will do what again? They roll up the price. It's strategy. It's been competitive. Increase your sales and develop new markets. We have come together to develop synergy. You don't know me, I don't know you. You may be so many miles away from me, but you know that we can link ourselves together. If not for just information, you can just call me and ask me, please, how much is a kilo now in your area? Ask, call another person, how much is a kilo now? Please, how much is this now? Then you go to your drawing table, you, com you compare your prices, and you know what to do. So you increase your, you develop, and of course you reduce your cost, and they become much more efficient. How do you re reduce your cost? Reduce your labor. How do you reduce your labor? Increase the systems you operate. Improve on the systems you operate. Part of how you can do that, you can use these kind of tanks. If you go outside, you see the, you see the, the dimensions, you see the number of fishes that each tank can actually accommodate. If you have one before, increase it to two. And please, you don't need to go to bank to get some money all the time as low. You can approach family members and friends. If you're a good person, they will give you. If you're not a good person, they might not give you. But if you're a good person, people can actually partner with you and you can raise more funds. If you have been, if you have, if, if, if you have only one pound before, this is the time to add two to it. 
Because it is the same labor you will still use and you will have increased the, 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 the quantity. It will improve the skills of your workforce. What I used to tell my staff is this. I pay you, I train you. The rest is left to you. Whatever you do with your life after that is left to you. I train you so that I can get better delivery from you. There's some of our people that it is when they want to do something so technical on the farm, that's when they will send their manager out because they don't want to put morale to him. They say, hey, 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 wait, 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 go on. Before she comes, they will have adjusted it. We used to do it until we realized that our businesses were going down. But now what do we do? We call them, come. See this thing I want to do. Open your eyes. By the time he or she gets it, your business will improve. And interestingly, I told a friend of mine some time ago, the generation of my father, they built out their houses at the age of 20, 30. Now, for some of us, how many of us have actually built houses at the age of 20 and 30? It's because what our fathers used to do, they did not show us. They only showed their apprentices. And those apprentices, by the time they grew up, they used to call our father Oga, but they look at us now and they, they see us as, you know, that we are nobody. So please, the time has come for you to show your managers and your people, even your children. When, well, yeah, enter on, enter on, enter on. If it will stick you today, don't worry, it will not stick you tomorrow. We will do it together. Let us show them. That is how you improve the skills of the people. When you do that, of course, you get much more comp They use technology much more efficiently. When you use it, that is technology. A lot of things we never believed could, be, could happen. Those things are happening now. And I'll quickly drop this right here. I believe there is this transportation by Okada here. In Lagos, there is Gokada, there is OP. I don't know if they're here now. Now, do you realize Uber, from the comfort of your house, you can just pick up your phone and you call them and they'll come and pick you to where they're supposed to take you. Do you know it is possible with technology for you to sell your fish also? How do you do that? If you send a message to your agreement, I have 20 tons. Just text me. You don't even need to call him. Late in the night, I have 20 tons of fish that I want to sell. Oga Grumen, I beg, help me. Do you know you are using technology? And you know he can respond and he will tell you how many kg, average size, what price. You respond again. And say, okay, I will link you up with so so and so and so person. True life, true life. The time I needed to go to Abuja, and the person I met in Abuja, at the borders of Abuja, a farm, Nasarawa, he needed to buy fish and he told me about it, 30,000 juveniles. And when I left his farm for, after the consultancy, I came back to my base. When I got to my base, a friend called me and said, Oga, I have fish with juvenile. I said, how many? He said, over 50,000. I kept quiet. My friend in Nasarawa, he said, you needed fish. How many? 30,000. I did not link them together. I did not. I only asked the person in Nasarawa how much he wanted to buy. He said he's ready to buy a 30 naira. I asked the person, yeah, how much do you want to sell? He said, okay, because sin are you now. I can give it to you at 70 naira. Do the mathematics. It's technology. It's technology. And by the time the fishes were, were going, I did not send the owner of the fish. I only sent the driver. So that the person will not collect the number. And they will remove me from the equation in case of another time. Improve your technology, reduce your waste. You reduce your waste with the knowledge that you can get from people. When somebody has a particular information and you, that person shares the knowledge with you, you are reducing waste. If somebody tells you that I'm using 60 bags to feed 1,000 fishes, you are reducing waste because you might have been using 85 bags. So you reduce your waste, then you improve the quality of whatever you do, your products. Some of us that we raise fishes in artificial systems, some of us that we raise fishes in ponds, when we want to sell, please let us adopt a system whereby we clean the fishes very well. Push clean water to them before you sell. The reason for that is this. The, when the fish is from healthy pond, when you want to sell them, there is no way there will be no sand in their goats. Because they eat sand. When you kill them, you see that there is sand in their goats. People who dry the fish, you suddenly realize they don't want to buy from you, but they prefer to buy from a government because they said, this fish is always clean. It's because they actually use those tapolin ponds. Inside tapolin, there, there's no sand. And you will not know why. You know? improve on your quality and respond much more quickly to innovations way back then when the automatic clipper came out my father could not just think how can they just put it mm, but he was used to this kind of clipper 
and he will keep on saying, what is going to happen if the discreet papa just sleeps and he just cut my hair? I will say, daddy, he, he, things are changing. Adopt, embrace technology.